ten o'clock. This is BBC Television. Good evening. On the worst day in the 92-year history of the FA Cup competition, when only three of the scheduled 32 ties took place, we are able to bring you film reports of all three ties tonight, thanks to the frantic efforts of our camera crews and the club's concern who cooperated so well in our last-minute rearrangements. And such is the glamour of the Cup that, though only three games were played, there was plenty of incident. For instance, at detail, Sunderland only played under a protest lodged by Chairman Mr. Sig Collings over the ground conditions. But 90 minutes later, they had the last laugh, as you can now see, as we join our commentator, Wally Barnes, for our first report, Preston versus Sunderland. And there is Preston North End, on a very skiddy surface, playing against Sunderland in the third line of the FA Cup tie, and they have yet to beat Sunderland in five attempts in the FA Cup. And there, number 10 is Crossan, the expensive buy from San Liège for Sunderland at inside left, playing on his first FA Cup game for Sunderland. So it's Preston North End, the kickoff in the third and FA Cup tie at Deepdale against Sunderland. Preston in the white shirts, blue shorts, Sunderland in the red and white striped jerseys and white shorts. Conditions here far from ideal. The thaw has set in and there's quite a lot of water coming on the surface as the game goes on. There's a reasonably strong wind blowing down the pitch and drizzle in the bargain. And that's what will happen to the ball every time it comes down. It will skid through very rapidly. And it's a question of the players with the better balance that will come out on top in this game. Luck undoubtedly playing a big part in this game this afternoon. Singleton for Dawson to Thompson. Holden, there's a foul against McNair. Three minutes gone in the first half. And Mr. Holland having a word with Mulhall, the outside left of Preston, telling him to stay ten yards away from the ball, undoubtedly. Since the kick was the whistle for, there's exactly 60 seconds have gone by, so that's 60 seconds of no football. Let's see what happens from this free kick by Holden. And it's in the net! And it's a goal! But I'm going to give every credit for Holden seeing the gap there. Very clever piece of thinking by Holden, but the first time shot and left Montgomery completely flat-footed. He did appeal for offside, but Mr. Holland, who is an extremely competent referee, had no hesitation. And that's the first goal of the afternoon. By holding the outside right of Preston. Former England, Bolton, outside right. Put them one goal to nil in the lead. Sunderland now, kicking off one nil down. Nelson. Davison. Ross just placing him there. Ball pushed well inside, Fogarty going on to it. Hook back and that's the equaliser. Right on half time, and it's Sharkey. The little man, the little centre forward for Sunderland after a very nice depth pass down the line there by Davison. And there's Sunderland, very rightly so, back on level terms with the score 1-1. And there's Mr Holland having a look at this pitch to see whether or not it's fit to go on playing with. He's walking into a very deep puddle there. It's conceivable that he may well call it off. I don't know. But he's obviously a little worried about it. I must say that the water has come up considerably since the start of the game. And this undoubtedly is due to the thaw and the rain that has been falling incessantly throughout this first half. 
Well, we'll just wait and see. We've got, I make it about another six minutes before they come out to play again. And he's uh, had a good look at the pitch. I wonder what he's going to do. Sunderland then to kick off in the second half with the score 1-1. And the conditions very much worse in the second half than they were at the start of the game. The water has come up out of the pitch. So much so that Mr. Holland very perturbed about it at half-time because he was walking along the pitch for some four minutes after the players had gone in to see whether or not the conditions were bad enough to stop the game. Preston's goal kick being nodded the wrong way by Sparlin to Fogarty. Anderson. And Fogarty now. Can he get a shot in? And he's wonderful goal by Fogarty. First time hit on the run by a little Fogarty. Number eight. And Sunderland have gone one goal from nil in the lead. After just 15 minutes play in the second half, they lead by two goals to one. Always appears when you say they're not showing any aggression, they promptly get a goal in the back of the net. Davidson getting it forward to Thompson. And Hurley making a desperation turn there. Slight case of pushing by Dawson, so that'll be a free kick to Sunderland. completely misheading it and putting Sunderland in a very, very strong position. Fogarty going on to it. Ross. Throw in for Sunderland. Fogarty taking the throw. That's Nelson taking the throw. Fogarty just jinking his way past there. Tries to punch it. Sharky turns and there's the third goal. Well, one must give full marks to Sharky there under those very difficult conditions. Turning and hitting the ball. Light lighting into the top corner of the net after some 24 minutes play in the second half. Sunderland 3-1 now in the lead. Preston straight into the attack. Sparvin. Uh, Dot is also. Uh, he might well have had a dip there. I think he's pushed it out to Thompson. taking the throw to cross Nelson straight after Davidson's head Fogarty getting it to Davidson cross Anderson to Fogarty trying a shot and it's there misled you that I thought it was Fogarty. In fact, it's Davison, the outside right of Sunderland that has put them beyond all measure of doubt into the fourth round of the FA Cup. Four goals to one in the lead with it can't possibly be more than a minute and a half to two minutes play. So there is no doubt at all who are going to walk off the pitch winners of this game this afternoon. So Sunderland again proved Preston's jinx with seven cup wins in their seven meetings. And Chairman Collings said afterwards that he was still of the same opinion that the match should not have been played, but he was well satisfied with the result, and I'll bet he was. Our next stop is Plymouth, where bad luck dogged Argyle in their match against West Bromwich Albion. Not only did they lose, but they also lost their centre forward Alec Jackson, who was carried off in the 35th minute with a broken bone in his right leg. Our reporter at Home Park was Morris Edelston. then to kick off against the home side Plymouth. West Bromwich playing from 
right to left. The man poised over the ball there, centre forward Smith. Tall, lean figure. On his right, Fenton, the new bye-bye manager Archie McCauley. And on his left, of course, Kevin, the international. Full back how? Kevin. Fulton. Williams, the left back. The ground conditions extraordinarily good. Most of the snow cleared off. And a tribute, I think, from the ball here to the ground staff. And Potter, the West Brom goalkeeper. McInerney. Johnny Williams, the wing half. To Williams again. A probe forward, McInerney. And the corner, I think. catch a corner again Lil then the Plymouth winger and Fincham the tall Fincham centre half has come up a low one McInerney Powell clearing Williams the wing half and Plymouth pressing Drury the left half O'Neill and a foul no the referees wait play on the ball to Kevin the inside forward and the players noticeably slipping a bit Kevin firing for goal quick opportunist this boy Kevin fired very quickly when really there was little chance but McLaren was there this is Reeves Rory out to Clark. Clark turning it across field, a good one too, to Fenton. The inside forward, Fenton. A shot for goal here, a good one, a beautiful goal there! A lovely goal by the wing half, Rory. And in these early stages, I would say Plymouth rather having the worst of things. Tremendous tackle there by Reeves, but it, a good cross ball, it was fair, but it was strong, and the ball headed into touch there by Powell, the fullback. The throw taken by Malloy, the winger, plays it back to Bryce Fulton. That's Johnny Williams, the right half, healing it to Newman. Newman with it now, taking the long shot, my goodness, it's hit the post! 40 yards and it's hit the post, what bad luck! And the game goes on. Fulton, now will that give Plymouth a bit of heart? Certainly Potter was taken by surprise at the range of that shot. A full 40 yards, I would have said, by Newman, the wing half and skipper of this Plymouth side. And really desperate luck. McInerney. Well, look, he's got it! A ball that dipped in flight. It was a magnificent shot by McInerney. And after 28 minutes on my watch, the scores are level here at Home Park. One goal apiece, and we've seen two of the best goals I've seen this season. Newman. Out to Nicky Lill, the winger. And that's Williams fouled by centre forward Jackson and Jackson in doing the or in committing the offence has hurt himself inside forward Fenton to Jackson, to Fenton. Fenton, a good ball out if you can control it, you can't. Clark, the winger. A 
through to Plymouth. That's Johnny Williams there. To Reeves. Reeves looking for McLaren, but playing it dangerously back, and Smith, the centre forward, on it. Moving on the outside, and I think forcing a corner kick. Four minutes to half time, the score one each, and the corner kick to West Brom. An in swinging corner, a good one, up go the heads, ahead of the goal, it's in! It's Kevin, the danger man, of course, in this West Brom side, and he's put West Brom for the second time in the match into a one goal lead, this time making the score 2 1. Number eight there is McInerney. A little slow on it. This is right back how coming centre field. Oh, a beautiful ball through to Kevin in the inside left position, advanced. And played out there for a corner kick by centre half Fincham. And the man that's come across for the corner to make it an in swinger is the outside right Jackson, taking it from the left flank with West Brom leading 2 1. Up go the heads, a chance here for the wing half, a lovely shot, oh my goodness! Cram really fired that very, very hard indeed, and it thundered by the post. Plymouth then to start the second period, trailing two goals to one down against West Brom here at home park. And we're off. The ball played back to Reeves, the fullback. And Plymouth will be anxious, I think, to put everything into this match now to get on level terms. And Plymouth still holding this ball. Building up yet another attack. Reduced now to ten men, centre forward Jackson off the field of play. And that's Kevin breaking loose, a long ball down the middle to Smith. Smith's onside. If he can beat the defender, he does, he must have a chance. And it's in there, off the inside of the post. Centre forward Smith to make it 3-1. centre-half Jones and I think we'll find that West Brom will be content to contain this game against the unhappy ten men of Plymouth Argyle the home side played forward again that's Cr uh, Cram the right half beautifully turning it back to Jackson Jackson with it now Beautifully beating his man, turning it across goal, pulling it back, it's an own goal by left half and skipper Newman. But what a lovely bit of dazzling footwork by this outside right Jackson. Bad luck on Johnny Newman. <laughs> McLaren in the home goal had no chance at all. But that makes it 4-1 and I think it ensures that the side from the first division West Brom will be going for sure into their hat on Monday at Lancaster Gate. McInerney. Cutting inside. To Newman. Still Newman. And again this wall of vertical striped defenders of West Brom played out. Jackson. Centre forward Smith. Out to Clark, the winger. Clark cleverly beating his man. Is a beautiful little ball player. Cutting it in field there to the left half. A shot for goal, a chance for a goal, it's in there. A ricochet off that I think gave Kevin, it's very difficult in this light, but I'm pretty certain number 10 it was, Kevin that scored that goal. To make it uh, a nap hand, and West Brom lead by five goals to one, and on our clock, barely seconds left to play as Mr Smith looks at his watch, and the game is restarting. Albion thus knocked Plymouth out of the cup for the second time in three years, and on that occasion, Derek Kevin scored a hat-trick. Here's some table tennis news. Mary Shannon, the 18-year-old from Worcester Park, Surrey, kept a day of shocks in the English Closed Table Tennis Championships at Manor Place Bars, London tonight, when she beat Diane Rowe of Middlesex to win the women's singles title 21-16, 21-16, 21-18. It was the first time that Miss Rowe had been beaten in the Closed Championships, for she's won it on all three previous occasions. 
and unranked 15-year-old Chester Barnes of Forest Gate won the men's singles title when he beat Alan Rhodes 21-10, 15-21, 21-19, 24-22 to become the youngest ever player to win the national title. Well, lastly, the shock of the day. Lowly fourth division Tranmere met the goal-scoring might of Chelsea, who are riding it at the top of Division 2. And how they must have frightened the Londoners. Twice they were ahead. It was only bad luck that robbed them of victory, as Kenneth Whiston home now reports. And here at Fenton Park, Birkenhead, home of Tranmere Rovers team. Tranmere Rovers team in all-white strip, almost invisible against the carpet of snow on which this match will be played. Tramier, at least with their full team out, they meant to watch Dave Hickson, number nine, at centre forward. And uh, over at the other side, in those dark shirts, the traditional dark shirts of Chelsea, the second division league leaders, all but two of whom are sensibly wearing gloves on this surface, which is covered by something like an inch or an inch of half snow, and underneath that is a very hard top surface indeed. And in this clash of 4th Division versus 2nd Division, it's Tranmere in this all-white strip who kick off. The referee, Mr. Horner of Coventry, is checking his watches. And this FA Cup third-round tie begins. Remember, Chelsea way out on top of the 2nd Division playing as well as a Chelsea side has ever played in the whole of the history of the club. Tranmere near to the bottom of the 4th Division with just point to match average, but still they haven't been beaten at home since October the 6th. An enthusiastic crowd behind Tranmere. They've got, even got supporters of Everton and Liverpool here. But Chelsea not likely to be worried about that now. Shelito. Shelito to Moore, the schemer of the Chelsea forward line. The man who lies behind the rest of the forwards. Conroy up to Hickson, Dave Hickson, a great favourite always on Merseyside. Right, it's Menables for Chelsea. Now to Shelito. A lot of stamina and courage is going to be necessary in this game, as well as footballing skill. Obviously dropping back to keep, help keep an eye on Tambling. Now, Neil. Neil, very strong in the tackle, former Bolton and Betty player coming away with it, but so many players is finding it difficult to control the ball when making a pass. Now, Peter Jackson, this very promising young centre half of Tramier now up to Hickson. Hickson unable to find Jones. Now it's Chelsea moving on to the attack. Jackson, that's a dangerous one with a fast character like bridges on your heels. to Gubbins. Gubbins now to Hickson, now to the right halfback King. And here's Jones, the inside right. Upton covering him and going into the tackle, but it's a corner. And this crowd at Tramir sounding as loud in the praises of the home side as any crowd at Goodison Park or Anfield just across the river from here. Jones with the corner for Tramir. That's a lovely one, King! A goal! He scored! Eighteen minutes gone, and King has scored, and two youngsters come on the field to add in the congratulations. And what are two youngsters coming on now? This is very silly. There's going to be quite a lot of trouble if the youngsters do this. Tranmere Rovers are a goal up. And the crowd really happy now. Forgotten all about their frozen toes, their frozen fingers. And this brittle breeze which is sweeping across this pitch. But as Tranmere Rovers have taken the lead against the mighty Chelsea. Tranmere going all out, but Jones limping away from that tackle as Chelsea come onto the attack now. Tamling is hitting that one. So these speedy Tranmere defenders are always there first, hustling the Chelsea forwards into mistakes. 
Venables, more attacking wing half back, finding Tambling. Up comes Venables again up to Murray. And Jackson, sudden and sure footed as ever. Mortimer into Shelly Toe. Upton, he's got Harris on his left, but prefers to find Venables. Now to Moore. Bridges back to Moore, out to Blundstone. Tramier just falling back in face of this, and that's Harris who's moved up the left wing. Now Tamley going to get a shot in, should be the equaliser, it is. 33 minutes gone, and the irrepressible Bobby Tamley has got the equaliser in almost silence, except for the roar of the faithful Chelsea supporters who've made a long journey in these bad weather conditions. Tramier mustn't give Bobby Tamling chances like that. That's Campbell up to Hickson. The Baltimore coming in so quickly. And a bit of trouble between Baltimore and Hickson. And Baltimore has been hit in the face. Dave Hickson in a bit of trouble again. Well, Mortimer all right again. The referee has penalised Hickson. Free kick to Chelsea. Gubbins getting that one and Jones. <laughs> beating Upton to it, but Venables coming across very strongly. Oh, finding Blundstone very rarely wastes the ball. Blundstone to number eight, Tambling. Must be half time. Any second now as in comes Bridges. And Experienced defenders Conroy and goalkeeper Leyland. Mortimer putting it back. Referee having another look at the watch. And the whistle goes for half time with the score one goal each. And so let's see whether Chelsea can pull it out of the bag in the second half or whether this. Quick, hard-tackling Tremere team can worry them out of their usual immaculate style. Here's Gubbins. And that cross for one, and there's the limping king. He's got an even heavier bandage now on his right leg. Still finding Campbell. And now to Neil. And Benetti a great mistake! Is it going to be a goal here? Oh, what a mistake by Benetti! Jones has scored! Second half gone, and Mortimer appealing to the referee. Offside, no doubt. And Chelsea making a really vigorous appeal for offside. They want the referee to have a word with the linesman, but he says no. But offside or no offside, the referee now looking to the linesman, and the linesman just keeping his flag down and Campbell and Campbell now being very silly towards the inside left more Campbell was well inside the center circle long before the ball was kicked off so Tramier at 2-1 in the lead and offside or no offside it was a bad mistake by Bonetti and now the Tramier players are joining with the fans and trying to rile the Chelsea lads Hickson calling at the Chelsea players and there's Gubbins having a word with Hickson very sensibly too and Hickson now being spoken to deservedly he was shouting at the Chelsea players it's very silly 
Tranmere are going to throw their advantage away by being rather stupid about things. There's Bridges on the left wing. Murray to Tamling. Can Tamling get a shot in the other lovely save by Leland? Up to Finney. Mortimer. Now Murray inside the Tamling. Back to Moore. In comes Blundstone from the left wing. Now to Bridges. A lovely goal. A beautiful goal by the centre forward Bridges. With 61 minutes gone, Barry Bridges has equalised. Well, Chelsea were satisfied with the draw, for they must start hot favourites before their own crowd at Stamford Bridge for the replay on Wednesday at 7 o'clock. But Tranmere's John King will probably miss this match. Well, those two names, Tranmere and Chelsea, bring the total of teams going to the hat for the next round of the Cup to 62, two less than in the previous round. Let's hope this foul weather soon comes to an end, or else this year's FA Cup competition will still be in progress next year. What a thought. Well, before we go, let's have a look at the rearranged ties. These matches will be played on Tuesday, January the 8th. And these on Wednesday, January the 9th. And with that, we end tonight's special FA Cup edition of Saturday Sport, which I hope has compensated for not being able to see your own local tie. Till next week, goodbye. BBC Television, 10.35.